Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Slava Jesus Christ. Glory be to Jesus Christ. The Lord has exhibited us last as those uh, prepared to die, those destined to die. What is Saint Paul talking about when he is using this expression in the context of the Corinthian church that he's speaking to? Well, it has to do, brothers and sisters, with what would happen when the Romans won a military campaign. So if the Romans won, what you would wind up doing is you would take all the soldiers that had successfully completed the campaign and you would march them through the city in glory. And everyone would cheer for them and they would, they would show them honor and reverence and all the rest of that. And then following them, you would have all of the spoils of war, all of the, all of the gold or all of the goods uh, or all of the people, the slaves, for example, that were, that were stolen from other nations that would come after them. Finally, last, you would have uh, the, uh, the soldiers of the opposing army who would be paraded through the streets on their way to the Colosseum in order to be killed in gladiatorial games or fed to the animals in the Colosseum. This, brothers and sisters, is the image that St. Paul is using to describe the suffering and the pain required in order to be an apostle. This is what he is saying. We are like those at the end of the line on our way to be killed, but you are rich. You are successful. You are seen in the eyes of the world to be, uh, you know, to got it all together, right? He is, he is being sarcastic, very, very sarcastic, brothers and sisters, to the Corinthians who are sitting in the Colosseum, not cheering on these martyrs, but refusing to get up off their butts in order to carry on the apostolic mission that they have been given by the Lord. It is an exhortation, brothers and sisters, in order for us to take up our call of being an apostle. And what is an apostle? What does that word mean? Well, it means sent. It means someone who is sent. An apostolos is someone who is sent, not with his or her own gospel, not with his or her own ideas or message, but with the gospel or the message of whoever it is that sent. They are sent with the Lord's uh, instructions, the Lord's saving plan for us. And it's interesting to note, no one in the scriptures, brothers and sisters, has a deep encounter with the Lord who is not sent. Right? Remember the man who is born blind and the Lord puts dirt on his eyes and says, go, right? Go to the pool of, of Siloam, which means sent. <laughs> he sends him there in order to, uh, to, to wash himself. Moses does not encounter the Lord in the burning bush and then have a wonderful, op a wonderful moment there and then go back to tending his sheep. He's sent to Egypt where he is told to set the Lord's people free despite the fact that he is a wanted criminal in Egypt. Peter, when there's the giant catch a fish, turn away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man, right? The Lord says, yeah, yeah, I know, Peter. Now, about this mission that I have for you. Anyone who has a deep encounter with the Lord is sent, becomes this type of apostle in order to bring the good news to the world. But one thing that we uh, don't like about that whole vocation of being apostles is the thing that we all try to avoid and that is the fact that the true indication 
of success in apostolic work is resistance to apostolic work. In other words, pain and suffering. Pain and suffering. If we are truly to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to the world, there will be resistance to that. St. Uh, John Chrysostom said, uh, war against us means we are making war. This is what it means. It means, brothers and sisters, that we are on the offensive if there is that resistance. Today we celebrate the synaxis of the 12 apostles, the gathering, the remembering of those 12 specifically that our Lord names and calls out of the world. I've been watching that show Chosen with, uh, with the family. Uh, it's not the gospel. You know, it requires some interpretation. Uh, you know, there's some things you could take or leave from that show. But one of the things that we really enjoy, I specifically enjoy, is the fact that each of those characters really has a unique personality. When you think about it, those apostles were all very, very different people, right? You've got fishermen, simple fishermen. You've got an ex-tax collector. You've got a zealot who's interested in the violent overthrow of Rome. You've got all sorts of different people. Two brothers who have such a hot temper that our Lord calls them the sons of thunder. You know, you, you've just got these incredible people. They all have gifts, and they all have gifts to share, a unique gift. And they're sharing those because the Lord needs all those gifts, and the Lord loves diversity. But one of those disciples, who comes at the end of the list, who we sometimes overlook, who our Lord chose specifically, is Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, who would betray him. The Lord knew that. The Lord still called him. The Lord still gave him his chance. And in preparing this homily, I came across a really interesting reflection about that that I'd like to share with you. Among the apostles, the one absolutely stunning success was Judas, and the one thoroughly groveling failure is Peter. Judas was a success in the ways that most impress us. He was successful both financially and politically. He cleverly arranged to control the money of the apostolic band. He skillfully manipulated the political forces of the day to accomplish his goal. And Peter was a failure in ways that we most dread. He was impotent in a crisis and socially inept. At the arrest of Jesus, he collapsed, hapless, blustering as a coward. In the most critical situations of his life with Jesus, the confession on the road to Caesarea Philippi and the vision on the Mount of Transfiguration, he said the most embarrassing and inappropriate things. He was not the companion that we would want with us in the time of danger, and he was not the kind of person we would feel comfortable with on a social occasion. Time, of course, has reversed our judgments on these two men. Judas is now a byword for betrayal, and Peter is one of the most honored names in the church and the world. Judas is a villain. Peter is a saint. Yet the world continues to chase after the success of Judas, financial wealth and political power, and to defend itself against the failures of Peter, impetus and ineptness. What's the difference, brothers and sisters? What's the difference between these two apostles? Reliance on God, plain and simple, reliance on God. Peter comes back to our Lord, repents from what it is that he has done, devotes his life to coming back and serving the Lord, to following out what the Lord says, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. This is what Peter does. Whereas Judas clings to his own ideas, his own self-gain until that breaks. He lies, relies on his own power and his own strength, and then it abandons him at the end, as we know. Brothers and sisters, we are exhibited last on our way to the Colosseum in order to die, not with our own ideas or our own strength, but with the strength of the Lord. Today we remember an amazing apostle 
and that is Blessed Vasil Velichkovsky. Maybe some of you have been to his shrine in Winnipeg. Blessed Vasil Velichkovsky is one of the new martyrs of Ukraine, uh, beatified by Pope St. John Paul II in 2001. He, uh, he has his shrine in Winnipeg, where his body is, uh, is there. And if you go in there, you will see there are uh, uh, crutches on the wall from people that he has healed through his intercession. There was actually an icon that was uh, ex exuding myrrh uh, recently that is there. He is an incredible saint, brothers and sisters. And he really does uh, exemplify what St. Uh, Paul was saying in the, in the epistle today regarding suffering and being an apostle. You have to remember, brothers and sisters, that our church was the largest illegal organization, period, for the longest period of time. You know, we were, we were a, a church that was liquidated by the Soviets, and uh, Blessed uh, Vasil Velichkovsky is one of those saints who was secretly ordained a bishop in a hotel lobby, if you can imagine that, secretly ordained a bishop in a hotel lobby in order to carry on the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church underground during this time of Soviet oppression without his secret, full yes to the Lord, it is very possible that we would not have the sacraments that we have now in our church, right? I don't know. The Lord would have had another plan, I'm sure, but this is an, an incredible piece of the way the Lord has worked in the world through the work of this incredible man. And he suffered tremendously. He was arrested on more than one occasion for doing, doing the work of the church when it was outlawed. Finally, when he was caught and he was uh, sentenced to uh, manual labor in Verkuta, where he was doing coal mining, uh, his health got so bad and they started, the Soviets started to experiment on him chemically with chemical torture. Uh, it became so bad in, in that uh, concentration camp that the, that the Soviets sent him away because they didn't want him to die in their, in their care, in their, uh, in their um, concentration camp. But it's interesting, the nurse that uh, uh, was tar charged with administering this, this uh, death-dealing medication had compassion on him and wound up uh, injecting the pillow that he slept on instead of injecting him in order to spare his life, in order to spare his life, brothers and sisters, for his apostolic witness to us, war against us, means that we are making war. We are apostles, brothers and sisters. If we are suffering for the Lord's sake, not if we are there watching on the sidelines. And this is what St. Paul says to the Corinthians. This is what St. Paul is saying to us, and it is seen through the incredible witness of the blessed uh, Hieromartyr Vasil Velichkovsky, who we celebrate this day. Brothers and sisters, what does it mean for us, practically speaking? What does it mean for us, practically speaking? I would recommend three things. Number one, don't leave Jesus because of Judas. Don't leave Jesus because of Judas. Judas is one of the twelve. Judas is there, chosen by the Lord, given his shot by Christ himself. There are Judases, brothers and sisters, still in the church. There have been Judases in the church since the very beginning. Don't abandon Christ because there are Judases in the church. It's sort of like going to the gym, if you think about it, and going through the doors and saying, I don't want to work out here because there's all these overweight people here, right? It doesn't work that way, right? We are all here to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. And that includes all of us imperfect people that are here as well. Don't leave Jesus because of Judas. Number two, don't rely on your own strength like Judas did. Only boast in your weaknesses, like St. Paul says. Blessed Vasil Velichkovsky's life makes no sense unless there is divine, uh, a divine interpretation or divine help. Plain and simple. 
he could not have accomplished what he accomplished without the Lord's active involvement. Well, that's the work of the apostle, to show forth the fact that it's not about me. It's about the Lord. Don't rely, brothers and sisters, on your own strength like Judas did. It failed him. It will fail you too in the end. Instead, lean on the Lord and his mission, his love, his message, and his strength. And number three, the ability to go out in apostolic work relies on our ability to go within. Jesus in the gospel today calls out these Pharisees who are grumbling in their hearts. This man blasphemes. This man doesn't know what he's talking about. He's saying something terrible. Our Lord hears those thoughts. Brothers and sisters, the ability to go out depends on our ability to go within. What are the thoughts, what are the temptations that are holding us captive? St. Paul has a great explanation for this and a great remedy for that, and that is bless those who persecute you. Bless those who persecute you. Hard words, but the words of freedom, the words of real freedom. Bless those who persecute you and do not curse them. Fighting fire with fire is not going to work. We have to overcome evil with good. This is the point. And that means that when thoughts of resentment or bitterness or hatred or envy or anger bubble up in our hearts, we stop and we overtly and specifically ask the Lord to bless that person and mean it from our hearts. Lord, bless so-and-so. Lord, allow all your good graces to be showered down upon so-and-so. That, brothers and sisters, is the only way to maintain this apostolic orientation, to become an apostle of Christ instead of just an idolater of our own little ideas. Bless those who persecute you and do not curse them. We have, brothers and sisters, a tremendous celebration today of the 12 apostles, those called by our Lord to go out into the world and to share this incredible life-saving message. Let us not forsake this vocation that is also given to us, but take it up through the incredible example of Blessed Vasil Valachkowski and the 12 holy apostles who we remember today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Slava Jesus Glory be to Jesus Christ.